Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to Sparklethorn Designs. Okay, so here are the supplies that we're gonna need to make our little stamp pad. We're gonna need a ruler. We're gonna need some hot glue, which I actually turned on, hooray. Um, we're gonna need two, and this one didn't cut quite well, and I cut mine on my Cricut, but you don't need to do that. You need basically a four by six piece of leather or some kind of fabric that's not stretchy, um, that's, that's you know, a little bit thicker. This is just Dollar Tree leather. I got a roll from Dollar Tree and I got the navy. It needs to be cut in a two by six, as you can see, so you'll need a four by six piece to cut it in half. That will be for the binding. You're gonna need a pencil or a quarter inch dowel rod or something. You're gonna need two of these from Dollar Tree. They have the magnets on the back. Be sure you get the four by six because they also have four by four, which I know we've talked about that I've had those before. And then you're gonna need one of these. I got this at Dollar Tree as well, Crafter Square, adhesive cutting mats. It's for the um, Cricut Joy, but that's not what we're gonna use it for. Let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is we are gonna put aside these to remove the magnet from the back, the back of the picture frame, and you just want to gently try to pull it off. It should come off pretty easily. You don't want to use anything sharp because that will scratch it. It looks like it's going to leave all its stickiness on the, the magnet, or I mean on the picture frame. But that came off pretty easy. You can save this if you think you want to use it again later for something else. We're just going to use our thumb or whatever finger you choose and we're going to come to the edge and we're just going to push it like inside. And as you can see, it's starting to just roll up. And you just do this until it's all gone. Okay, so Faithful Designs by Christy makes this look so much easier, and I'm not exactly sure why it looks like it does. And I don't know. It's got some residue. So we're gonna move on to the next step, and we'll see if maybe the next one isn't so bad. But you wanna be very careful that you don't get, and now I've got sticky on the front. What the heck? Um, want to be sure that you do not get anything on the inside that's wet. Yeah, this one is just a great big hot mess. Maybe I can get some glass cleaner on it in a little bit because that looks terrible. Okay, so I'm not sure. I will try again. This one just can maybe be the back. But with this one, I don't know if you can see it, it is still... Still got a couple little places, and it may be because I used it with a magic eraser. I didn't have any actual goo gone, so I tried the dish soap, but I could not get the dish soap to pull it off. And now, I don't know, it may be a little bit ruined with using the magic eraser. It may have been too abras abrasive, because you can see right up there. But we're gonna go with it, and we're gonna try. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, I took this out of its container. We're gonna grab and we're gonna pull this down just a little bit and fold it. We want it to be right here because we're gonna cut that off. And then we're gonna slide this underneath. And then this is one of my cutting mats. And I'm just gonna grab, I don't have, I have just my X-Acto knife. And then we're gonna score and cut it. Okay, and then 
I'm just going to bend it so that it'll bend on those scores. Just kind of back and forth until I get it a little bit more broken. And then I'm going to do it one more time. And ta-da! You got it. All right, this can just be trashed. All right, put that up so I don't stab myself. And then the next thing you're gonna do, pull that off. You're gonna lift this up wide and stick this inside. As you can see, I've got it lined up. Everything is lined up. Each of these little squares are a half an inch. Okay, push it down. Okay. Okay, let me grab my little exacto. I'm gonna probably have to change the blade after all of this. You have to be very careful because I made this little scratch up there. I don't know if you guys can see it. scratch in that. Okay. Anyway, we're going to keep going. That completes the very bottom. Okay. All right. So we have our base. The next thing you can do is if you want to be sure that you've got this stuck on good, just use your ruler place it inside in between the acrylic and just use it just to help push all the way down. All right. Then you can put your ruler aside for now. You're going to grab your top and you're going to put these to where they are, oops, this way, to where they are the curved where it, it's welded all together in one piece is at this end and at this end. You want them to be opposite so that they lay flat instead of um, here where they're going to both have some gap between them. All right, so that's what we're gonna do with that. Okay, so next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our two pieces for our hinges. We're going to wrap, wrap it around our pencil. We're gonna make sure that the edges meet, okay? Lining up my sides. Okay, 
lining, lining up my sides. Then I'm going to make a mark right here where the sides meet. I'm going to do it again on this side. And then I'm going to flip it over and do it on this side. And then Christy, Faithful Designs by Christy, she did hers with white. So hers was a little bit easier to see. Whoops. Okay. So we did that. This is how it looks if you can you can see. Okay. We're going to do it with this piece as well. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our ruler. And we are going to draw a line all the way across. Okay. All right. So now we have our lines drawn, I almost said driven. We have our lines drawn. And then the next thing we're gonna do, all right, we're gonna do one and one eighth markings. Then we're gonna do two and three eighths. Then at three and five eighths. And then we'll do one at four and seven eighths. Okay, so then what we're gonna do, and I think I probably should have done that here. We are gonna match these up. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out our X-Acto knife or box cutter or whatever you're using. And we are gonna slice down the lines that we've made, okay? Not outside the line, just straight inside the little boxes.
Okay. And then we have we have our cuts through all, all of them. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut on these lines right here. So there's that. Then we're going to skip this one. We're going to skip the next box and we're going to do the next one. There is that one. And then we're going to do this end as well. Okay. Just a little, little more of a nudge. There we go. All right, and then this is what it should look like. Okay, so then on this one, we're going to start with the one in the middle. No, I'm sorry. We're going to start with the one that's not cut on the other one. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to cut this one too. So now, if it goes this way, no, I guess it does go this way, then there is, there's what we're looking at. The next thing we need to do is cut the pencil that we're going to be using. And I had a couple of them in mind that I did not have to cut, but they're only like four and a half inches, so they're not gonna work. Okay. Let me tell you this. I didn't have anything. I didn't watch the whole video again whenever I did it, and that's bad on me. But you do need a pencil to complete this. And I didn't have anything that I was willing to use, and I cannot find a quarter inch dowel rod anywhere. I have bigger ones, I have smaller ones, but not one quarter inch. So I had two of these little pencils that have never been used and I cut them and then they were kind of yuck. So I glued them together. So, you know, crafty, right? But anyway, and then I just took some scrap 
vinyl and wrapped it around just to kind of give it some more um, sturdiness. I don't really think it'll need the sturdiness, but um, that's where we're at right now. Okay, so my ruler up out of the way, y'all. Next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna glue the long pieces and then we're gonna put this on top so that it'll be like this, okay? And we're gonna do that for both pieces, but just the long edges. Don't do any gluing in the squares. They need to remain, they need to remain open. Be sure that you do line up your edges. Uh -oh. And then I set that and then I went and I didn't use it. flatten that glue out a little bit so that it's not chunky. All right, so now you've got the one that has two and the one that has three, and then they're gonna fit on here together as so. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna glue one of them to this. You want the big domed part to be on the left when you go to glue that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we've got the bottom, we've got the domed part on the left, and we're gonna glue it to the one that has two pieces, okay? And we're just gonna take and we're gonna glue, and it's gonna have to stick to the acrylic, so make sure you use enough glue, but don't get it in the holes, okay? making sure it's squished down really well. Okay, and then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna glue this side. Nope, I had it right to begin with. We're gonna glue this side and we're gonna put, I've gotten stuff all over this. Let's see. We're gonna do this, I do believe. So we're gonna glue this to this side so that when we go to turn it, it will turn, okay? Like that cobwebby stuff is all over the place. All right. There, we have our very own stamp pad. And then while we are doing this, let me grab my stamps. And let's just test it out. Okay, so we're gonna give this a shot. I am going to lay the butterfly with the textured side down. I'm going to flip this over so that it'll pick up the stamp. 
there, I picked up the stamp. And then I'm going to use this blue ink. I'm going to put it down and stamp it. Okay, didn't get that wing at all, did it? Let's see, that's this one. Now, is it because, let's try it again. I think that's just because it's. Did a great job. So my suggestion would be, I, don't know, I just messed that up, but um, is when you go to when you go to do this, be sure that you're kind of before you push it down. Be sure that you kind of, and, and maybe with more work, the more you use it, it'll be a little more flexible. Just make sure that you know you have got it set the way you want. And then when you go to put the ink down, because that first time I noticed that it was um, a little more gappy over here next to this. So let's do, let's do another one. Okay, let's just go upside down. And actually, let's go over here to the side and see if that gives us a better result. Just something to work and see. Okay. Again, I'm going to put the butterfly where I want it. I'm going to kind of lift, make sure that I'm kind of getting that where I want it. And then pushing that down, and it is going to leave some because I didn't clean the stamp. But it's still left, even if you just wanted to do like a, a really light impression, it still, still did pretty good. All right. All righty. Let's just see how we're going to go. Again, I'm gonna lift it up and it may be a little bit blurred, which normally wouldn't already have ink on it, so that's fine too. Just for test purposes. Push it down good. All right. Oh yeah. I think that's beautiful. I think that's beautiful. All right, y'all. Well, there is our stamp platform made with Dollar Tree products. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about it, and whether or not you think that it's something that you would use very frequently. And if you would like to see more things with stamps, let me know and we'll see what we can do. And then the price for this was about $5 for everything here, not counting the pencil and the hot glue. Um, that's not bad, but I know how expensive that these can actually be. So, hope you enjoyed that pro project. I, uh, I did, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>